whether we like it or not, there are more EVs on our road. Now, you may have chosen to buy an EV and you may be completely happy with it. You may have bought one. You may be unhappy with it. You may just be dead set against them and will never even consider buying an EV. But the number of EVs on our road affects all of us. How so? Well, the cost of our insurance is calculated on the likelihood of an insurance company paying out money. The 14 years that I spent within the insurance industry in my early working life taught me that insurance companies don't like to lose money. They always err on the side of caution. The problem we've got now, though, is that EVs are much more expensive to repair. So why is that? And we're also going to look at a statistic that's been banded about about EV fires, which makes for interesting discussion. And I just urge each one of us to do thorough research, not just to look at the headline. One of the headlines that I saw very recently was based on 2019 figures. It stated that EVs have a much lower chance of fire than conventional combustion engine vehicles. And it was interesting, the numbers that were held up was in that year, the UK Fire Service had attended 1,898 fires on combustion engine vehicles, but only 54 on EVs. On the surface of it, it looks like combustion engine vehicles are much more prone to catching fire. But that got me thinking, is that the real story? So I delved into the figures from the government statistics for how many EVs were on the road. And I thought it would be interesting to just look at the fires as a percentage of each of these types of vehicle. In 2019, our UK government stats showed that there were 269,000 low emission vehicles registered. Now, low emission isn't just EVs. It includes anything that emits a very low amount of carbon. But it did say that 39% of those ultra low emission vehicles were battery electric vehicles, which gives us an indicator as to how many were on the road at the time. In the total, there were 38.7 million vehicles on a road. The fire rate for internal combustion engine vehicles based on the total number of vehicles on our road minus the EVs is around 1 in 20,340. For EVs in that year, it was one in 1,943. So on the surface of it, that statistic shows that EVs are much more prone to catch fire than combustion engine vehicles. 0.05% of EVs caught fire in that year and 0.005% of internal combustion engines caught fire in that year. But we have to accept that the sample number of EVs is very small. We can't really draw any conclusions based on that. Looking at more recent statistics that we have, it shows that EVs per capita are less likely to have a fire than a combustion engine vehicle. This highlights really the need to be very careful drawing conclusions from statistics because there are lots of complex factors involved. When a battery becomes damaged, it is more prone to cause a short circuit to overheat and that causes a fire. And as the fire spreads through the battery, which stores a lot of energy, you get a very, very intense, long burning fire that is very hard to deal with. Now, because of that risk, insurance companies have had to be extra cautious when it comes to repair. Repairers now have to go through a whole set of safety checks, isolation of the vehicle, various protocols. In some countries, dealing with electric vehicles after accidents, the vehicle is specifically enclosed in a container to reduce the risk of fire before it is recovered to a repair specialist. Now, this extra caution on the part of insurers has put up the insurance costs extortionately. Any damage involving an EV is more likely to result in the car being written off. When you've written a car off, it's a much higher replacement cost. And repairs to EVs are rather specialist, should we say, in fairness. It's not something most garages and most body shops are equipped to deal with unless they've had special training. It will change. Things will develop in time as expertise crops up and we get to see more about the risks associated with batteries. But at the moment, insurance companies are erring on the side of caution. We're seeing much higher premiums on electric vehicles and every other premium is 
is also increasing because they expect to have to pay out more money in claims where an EV is involved. I've obviously just looked at statistics from the UK. So if, if you have access to stats in your country, please drop links to the references in the comments below. I love reading these statistics. I want to try and build up a fully rounded out, unbiased picture of the risk of battery fires on EVs because most people are pushing an agenda. They'll manipulate the figures and present something that fits their argument. But I actually want to go for the truth to drill it right down and be able to present the accurate facts. There's also a need to use up to date statistics. And with that in mind, I'll be digging around for 2023, 2024 stats just to see if there's any differences or any concerning trends that are cropping up. At the moment, though, the media does seem to be hyping battery fires and you don't really hear reports of conventional car fires, although they happen a lot more. The interest there, the shock value, the people that are going to click the headline are more concerned about seeing the risk of this new technology that has just appeared on the market. Please let me know what you think of this debate. Have you noticed your insurance premiums starting to creep up? Do you think it's primarily down to EVs or just the general way economies are going on the grand scale of things around the world? If you've enjoyed this video, please boot the like button. That really does help us to get out there. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. There's a link there for you to subscribe to the channel and I've lined this video and this playlist up for you that you should find really interesting. Thanks for watching. See you in these next videos.